<laughs> Good evening. Glad to see you all come out for the cooking class again this evening. Um, it's kind of a hard to come in from outside, I think, as nice as it is out there. So this is our cooking class. It's on Indian cuisine. So I hope you're ready for some treats like I was if you're not used to that particular um, kind of food. So we do welcome you. Um, uh, the class registration will open at 8 p.m. tonight for next month. So you have to stay up late or watch the basketball game and, and register for next month. Um, and remember, there are the YouTube videos that are about a week after this that are available if you want to you want to watch us again, and then the Pinterest on CMH follows as well. Uh, another request that we do have, I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, but if you're, un you're registered and you're unable to attend, please let us know, because we do have a waiting list every month, and then we're able to call those people and then have them um, fill some of the seats. So we have several that didn't let us know uh, this month, so... If you would, in the future, if you're not able to make it, please call Tamara, and then she will call someone on the waiting list so they can attend. So if you've been on the waiting list, you kind of know how that is. So we would appreciate that. Um, so we're going to get started um, with what we've got the first one. We're going to, oh, okay, we're going to do the flatbread first. Okay, Lynetta's going to do that. And you might notice that Lynetta likely will not be with us next month. <laughs> About a week from now, she probably won't be here at the hospital with us. So um, she's going to go ahead and do the first recipe, and I believe they should be getting your samples out as she talks about it. All right, so we are going to start with this avocado whole wheat chapati. Has anyone ever had Indian flatbread before? Roti? All right. All right, has anyone ever had naan bread before? Does anyone know the difference? No. All right, so naan bread is used or is made using yeast, and this roti, or this chapati bread, is made without using any leavening agent, so we don't have yeast in there. So th that's the difference, so now you know. All right, um, so this, this recipe, we have added an unusual ingredient. If you look at traditional Indian cuisine, they don't typically put avocado in this flatbread. When they make it traditionally, it's just made with a whole ground flour, which we have in this recipe, and water and oil. And so in this recipe, we've added a little bit more nutrition, right? So we've added avocado. Avocado um, is uh, becoming more in season, and so we should start seeing better prices with those avocados. Um, I know that sometimes they can be quite expensive, um, but you should find that they're getting better prices. And this recipe only takes three medium-sized avocados. Um, I encourage you, when you pick out your avocados, make sure that they're not too soft. Um, you'll want to get one that's you know fairly firm, and then try to get as much of that um, flesh under that skin. There's a lot of nutrition there, and so avocados um, make this um, recipe uh, nutritionally powerful, if you will. So it's a fairly easy recipe, and I'm really excited. Jared's going to show you how to make it. And so in Indian cuisine, usually it's used um, to help dip with the curry, and so if, go ahead and try it, but save a little bit of it because traditionally it's used kind of like a spoon to scoop up. Um, rice or vegetable dishes as part of, of, of the meal. Absolutely. Okay, so what I would recommend if, if you do this recipe, um, it, it doesn't, from what I have, does not show you how much water actually goes in. Oh, yours does. So we had a bit of a swappy changing thing go on. So anyway, um, basically you're going to add your avocados into your mixing bowl. Okay? I would. I would recommend you mush them up a little bit at first, just with like a potato masher, um, and then add your flour, your salt, um, into your mixer, leave the water out. Just about the time it starts balling up and getting a little bit tight, slowly start adding that water, okay? Because if you bake, you know that from time to time, whenever the seasons change, the humidity rises and falls, your, your liquid amounts for this type of thing do change slightly. So I, that's what I would recommend, putting everything in, setting your water aside, add it in slowly to go, and so that way you can, you can get it to the consistency that you want it, okay? Um, you don't have to be uniform with these, okay? Um, and what I would recommend is getting a, a, getting a skillet good and hot. Make sure that it's good and hot first, 
Um, otherwise, you're not going to get that nice golden brown because when the oils begin to saturate that dough, um, it's, it's not going to brown up as much as you would like it to. Okay? While that's getting started, we're going to clean an avocado, which is very easy. Can you guys bring me a spoon, please? Thank you. Okay, what I would recommend is a good sharp knife cut into a straight circle. Cut your halves. Pop it right out. Okay? You made that look so easy. Let's see it again. It's very easy as long as you find some type of symmetry to that thing, which can be difficult. Um, if you follow that seed straight around, you're going to get it pretty straight every time. Okay? There's that. We're beginning to sizzle up here. You can hear that. Can you guys see it okay? All right. Thank you. Perfect. Good spoon, right? Um, you can cut these ahead of time or not. Uh, for this recipe, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, if you just want to plop them in there whole, because you're going to mash them with your potato masher or whatever first, and then it's going to get in there with that dough hook and mash up anyway. I think when I did this dough, I found one small clump of non-mushed up avocado in the 16 avocados that I had to do for this recipe. So that's, that's pretty decent. So it does a good job on its own. Just use that curvature of the spoon to go around, all the way around, and then scoop under. And you should come out with a pretty clean avocado skin, right? Sometimes you're going to end up with brown spots. See those? Up towards the stem, down here towards the pit. Um, you can just use your spoon, pull that stuff out. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Sometimes it can be kind of coarse like the, um, like the skin is on the outside. Um, so it's really just up to you. And there they are. Who thinks they can try that at home? <coughs> All right. Yeah. I, I always say that, that you honestly can do just about anything in cooking as long as you have the correct tools. That's the big thing. Um, if you know what tools you need and you're able to utilize those tools correctly, you really can do just about anything. Um, it, it's, it's simplified by having the right tools. So, or finding a cheap and uh, looking around your house and finding things that work, right? So one of the things that I love about avocado is that it contains a really healthy fat contains monounsaturated fats. And that monounsaturated fat is really good for boosting your good cholesterol. And so that's another benefit of a dish like this. If we add in an unusual ingredient like the avocado, we're giving ourselves a heart health benefit. So we're increasing our chances of having good cholesterol and lower than bad. We're about ready to turn this. You'll notice as it's, as it's frying in your skillet, you're gonna get a lot of, of bubbles coming out the sides of your uh, flatbread as soon as it goes into the skillet. That's going to stay around for about a minute or so, depending on how hot you have it, okay? Once those start to slow down like you're seeing now, you can check it, and it's starting to brown. You can get it turned. Um, it's going to be one of two things when the bubbles start slowing down. Either it was not hot enough, and your dough has sucked up all of the oil in your pan, right? Um, or your oven's not on. So, that happens too. And I was actually worried, I, that was the first thing I looked for, was I looked at this, because sometimes we have an issue with power shortage here and flip breakers, so always check that too. So, um, But yeah, it's nice golden brown. Um, you can always tell if, if you've got a lot of oil saturation in it, um, if you flip it and it stays real glassy looking, real shiny, and as you can see, except for the pockets that are thinner here, where it's boiling from the other side, these areas here are relatively dry. So that's a good sign that you had a hot enough skillet 
um, and you didn't have a lot of oil saturation into the flatbed. Jerry, what temperature if you're doing electric would you use? Yeah, what do you use? Something, something. Hot. Um, that's a very good question. Very good question. Um, um, I have ours here. Of course, these are induction ranges, um, and they're a lower voltage induction range, so they've got to make them a little bit hotter than you normally would. Um, I usually set this at about about 280. So um, you want it you want it hot enough to fry, okay? Um, which usually the oil temperature needs to be anywhere between 325 and 350 to do that. Um, so every, I mean everybody's stove is different. Um, you know whether you're using gas or electric, uh, they all kind of act their own weird ways. I've got one that it's a glass top, and you'll turn it on medium. Um, and it'll turn on and then it'll shut off for a while and then everything gets cold. And gotta know your equipment. Gotta know your equipment, so uh, that makes a big difference. But yeah, if you can get that grease right around that, that 325 to 350 mark, you should be good. What kind of oil do you use tonight, Jerry? I'm sorry? What kind of oil? What is the recipe called for? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding our time. No, we used uh, canola oil. So another heart healthy oil. Yeah. So traditionally, this is thrown onto a preheated skillet and um, or over even a fire, yeah. and so or in big ovens. So it really depends on what part of India or even Southeast Asia that you're talking about, because this is a very common bread to see all over um, that part of the um, the world. And so it's not just India, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka. Um, the list is really long, so this is a unique bread um, that we don't see oftentimes here in the United States, but it's very common in other parts of the world, and so it's a staple they make every day. Now that we've got that fried, what do we do with it? I you eat it. <laughs> you usually eat it with curries, which we're going to eat next. Oh, okay. yeah. so hummus, you can make hummus with it yeah. a lot of time in that area. Um, hummus is very, very popular to eat with. Oh, no, yeah, no. it's very similar to a tortilla, isn't it? Yeah. It's not a roll. It's thicker. So yeah, it's yeah. a lot thicker. Kind of, you use it like a scoop. Okay. Yeah. That's a great question. You guys can go ahead and start with the, uh, with the curry. Yeah, let's go ahead and start talking about this curry. So what we have coming next is the Easy Indian Curry. Now, does anybody know what a curry is? Okay. Say what? A mix of spices. That's exactly right. And so, again, like, like the chapati, it's really unique to the um, region that you're talking about. So if you were to travel to India, or perhaps you were to, you know, dine in an Indian family's home, it would really depend, the curry's going to taste differently, depending on what part of the country they're from. Perhaps their, you know, religious culture, or their family preferences. And so one curry is not the same from, you know, look, recipe to recipe. So one thing that you'll find with curries is that um, it's often a dish of meat or vegetable, and so this one tonight is um, all vegetable, um, and it's uh, just a, a sauce, really, with lots of different spices. And so you can see in this recipe, we've got a lot of ingredients, and it's because most of them are spices. And so if you look down through this list, we've got garlic, ginger, um, peppers, coriander, cumin, turmeric, and um, garam masala. And so, um, and, and you know, I, at first I thought when we were looking at these Indian recipes, we wouldn't be able to find that garam masala, but sure enough, we were able to find it here in Bolivar. So yes, you can find this ingredient. I think, where did we get it, Ms. Rhonda? I got those at uh, Woods, but I actually got the last two off the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, fingers crossed, somebody's going to win that garam masala tonight. Um, if not, I think Woods will they'll restock that oh, yeah. item. Oh, it looks like we got our um, flatbread done. Beautiful. All right, so one of the benefits of um, enjoying curries is that they're full of antioxidants. Antioxidants are little chemicals that we find in fruits and vegetables, and in this case, spices, that help fight inflammatory diseases. And so a lot of the diseases that Americans suffer from, like heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, um, certain cancers, um, are, are inflammatory related. And so eating a diet rich in these antioxidant foods um, is actually really beneficial for your overall health. So if curry is something that you enjoy, um, then just know that this is something really benefiting um, your health, no matter what your background is. It's probably going to do you very, very well. Um, I know that we're almost to the end of flu season, so um, antioxidants are also beneficial for common colds like that. Yeah. 
like the flu or um, other sniffly nose issues. Um, any tips on preparing this dish? Um, yeah, to jump back just for really, really quickly on the bread. Um, if, if you make the bread at home and you notice that it's, it's a bit thick, that's okay. okay. What I would recommend, preheat your oven for 350, um, brown it, get it nice and golden brown on both sides, and then put it in the oven. Okay? Um, and that way you're finishing that bread off, but you're not allowing it to set in the skillet and continue to burn and soak up grease. Um, and if you get your skillet good and hot, you can probably just do that anyway. Um, and it'll crisp up really, really nicely that way. So. I got one more question about yes. the bread. It, it shows chapati flour here. Yes. It's just a whole wheat brown flour. Yeah. Okay. You don't need to buy anything special. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. Just a whole wheat brown flour. Okay. Yeah. We actually used what we keep on hand here, so and it worked. It worked out great. So, um, with this, uh, really, what you're looking at is your vegetables. Um, when you go to saute them, you have to think about which ones saute the quickest, right? Um, and that's why they are designed in the descriptions in orders um, of sauteing, right? Um, if you cut your vegetables bigger um, to match maybe the size of the broccoli, um, you can get away with simplifying this and getting them all together at once, putting them in, sauteing them up. The only exception would be the carrots um, you may want to um, steam them a little bit ahead of time um, or make them smaller. Uh, maybe a shredded carrot would work good for you in this sense. Uh, as far as the vegetables go, you really can be um, as creative with it as you absolutely want to be. Um, you know, it's not, it's, not, it's not so much about the vegetables as it is about those spices. Okay? Um, those spices are going to be vibrant. They're going to be aromatic. Um, so anytime you're making this type of dish, it's a really good idea to take those spices, mix them all together, um, and roast them. Okay? Put them in a skillet. Don't spray it. Don't do anything to it. Put it in a skillet. Um, low temperature. Um, about 180 degrees is what I had our induction range on. You don't want it to brown, but you want them to get warm, right? So that it'll start releasing some of those oils and everything that's left in them even after dehydrating. Um, and they'll start to really fill your home with uh, this beautiful smell, if you like this type of food. <laughs> if you don't, it's not going to be that great. But uh, I, I didn't find very many people down there today that argued uh, that, it, that it stunk or anything like that in the kitchen. Everybody basically said that it smelled awesome. Because it really is very, very aromatic. So, so um, this kind of uh, food dining um, is part of Ayurveda. Is anybody familiar with Ayurveda? It's a type of medicine practiced in India and that part of the world. And so um, there, there's a lot of belief that eating foods prepared in certain ways at certain times of the day um, really has a benefit towards health. And so that's just one of the health practices worldwide. Um, but it's just something kind of interesting. And so that garam masala, um, it, it literally means hot spice. And so um, within Ayurvedic dining, there's, there's belief that those blends of spices really have overall health benefit. And so usually you'll find that those spice blends contain a variety of ingredients like ground cloves, cinnamon, nutmeg, bay leaves, and cumin. And so I think really you just need to read your label and see what your particular spice blend has. You could make your own if you would like. And there are plenty of recipes online available or in Indian cookbooks where you can make your own. So it looks like people are tasting their curry. Um, what do you all think? Is it good? I'm so glad that you think so. This is a great recipe to clean out your fridge with. It's a like um, Jared was saying, you don't have to stick to these particular vegetables. So this would be a great dish to take a variety of vegetables, just like you would a beef stew, and make this curry your own. You just need to stick with probably this arrangement of spices or tweak it to fit your flavor profile or your family preference. Um, this dish is often uh, served with rice, and so if you um, didn't make your roti bread or didn't have flat bread available, it, it goes really well over rice. And I'd always encourage you to try brown rice to get a little bit more fiber and, and nutrients. And so, Has anybody made um, basmati or jasmine rice before? I think those are, are recommended in the recipe or at the end of the recipe. 
or it may be on the other recipe. Um, but yeah, both of those rices are, are completely different flavors than your run-of-the-mill white rice, or even with, with the brown rice. Um, I've always said that, that brown rice has more flavor than white rice, um, and uh, jasmine rice would probably be next on that list, and then basmati above that. Um, it just really has this wonderful, wonderful flavor profile um, that's totally different than, than any other rice. So I recommend you, you make them, try them, be adventurous, try different things. Um, if you try it once and you don't like it, then you know, right? <laughs> All right, I think Rhonda's going to come up and share this next recipe, the chicken tiki masala. And I'm really excited for her to share with you all about it. So how do you like the curry? So you take that ro roti bread and push it up. Flat bread. Flat bread. And push it up and use it that way. I think you eat it, so works well. Too spicy for anybody? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. So um, the next recipe is the chicken tiki masala, um, and as um, Lynetta mentioned, you know our local woods market had the uh, masala that I picked up on Friday. Um, so we should be able to get it there if you if you decide you want to try these particular recipes with it. So I will share with you that I ask uh, um, our Dr. Sony here with CMH, if he would come and maybe share with us some of the Indian culture. So he's looking over the recipes when I asked him last week, and he's looked at that serving size on the flatbread and said, one, we eat about eight of them. <laughs> and he said, maybe, you know, what I would share wouldn't be so nutritious. And so we just offer the nutrition information uh, so that you all know what they'll be getting. So, um, so this recipe I tried um, last week at, at my house, and it did smell really good that night at, at my house. So um, some of the, the issues I had with doing it, and Jared can share if there was anything like that uh, that he had today, was that I did the yogurt um, and the lemon juice and garlic and put my chicken breast chunks in it and let it marinate. And then when I got ready to sear it, I had an awful lot of um, liquid come from that yogurt. So I would suggest if you do that that way, is you try to drain or blot that yogurt off of it. So it, because it does make it almost too soupy when you're trying to sear that chicken. So Jared did it a different way today. Work better than mine? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it seemed to work okay. Just use a colander and, and try to get as much of that um, liquid after you marinate it off. Um, and that's going to help quite a bit because um, like she said with with if it's, there's too much of it on there um, it, it really hinders the browning process of the chicken so um, and I actually you know started it that way and actually took it out and drained it because there was so much liquid on there so um, because it didn't sear really well and didn't get that golden brown that it suggests in, in the recipe so that was really the only issue I had uh, it didn't take near as long as I thought it would to actually prepare it. Um, so then putting all those particular no, spices no, no. together, uh, having all of these things in that particular recipe, um, you know, measuring those things out, um, did take a few more minutes. So my thought is if I do this again, I'm going to measure them all out ahead of time and put them in a little Ziploc. So I can just dump them in all together. Um, instead of ha putting them in, in individually. Um, and then just adding the butter and your onion and that grated ginger root. And I did use, um, you can use chicken stock or you can use the vegetable stock uh, as well. But I did use actually the chicken stock with it whenever I used, whenever I made it. So I think there's like seven different spices that you end up putting in it. And then you, we did, we left it off of of the recipe, but you could also put cayenne pepper in it if you'd like, if you want it a little bit more spicy than what you're getting tonight. That would. You, did you do that today? No, we left that out because there might be people like me that are that are trying it. Um, I did use, uh, you know, I know added salt, tomato sauce. Um, you could also take, you know, diced tomatoes and no added sauce, diced tomatoes and puree them up. That's just another step. If you happen to have those in your um, cabinet instead of uh, the, the tomato sauce or tomato puree, uh, I did use a reduced fat milk. You could 
actually garnish it with cilantro or maybe scallions, something like that, if you want to add that on top. I think that would make that makes a nice green attractive on top of it. So again, you could use the, the flatbread, I think, with this, kind of like we use a, a biscuit or a slice of bread or something like that, you use it with it. So uh, it does have that chicken in there, so it's gonna be your entree. And then you also have the nutrient, nutrient information. And we did have it, um, when we had it at my house, we had it on brown rice. Uh, that's what I had, you know, in the cabinet, in the pantry. So we did, did have it on brown rice. Um, and it really didn't take that long to make the sauce and kind of comes out like a gravy. Mine probably was even more because I had that yogurt I was kind of trying to get rid of or didn't had a little bit more in there that that, that yogurt thinned down to the, a liquid um, whenever I did it. Jared made it the whole sauce completely by itself, yeah. added your chicken in, seared your yeah. chicken and added it in. So that, it could be done that way as well. But marinated it as well in the yes. yogurt, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so, and I will also attest to the fact that you can keep it in three days in refrigeration because guess what I had for lunch today? My leftovers. So it, it does work uh, well for that. So um, you could use the non bread with this or you could use the flat bread, but that would be something traditional that they would do, um, I think, in India. Um, any questions, comments about this particular recipe? It's going to be your entree. So, you know, the calories are going to be higher because it's going to be probably your main meal. The nutrient information at the bottom does not include the rice that you might or might not have with it. Um, it would just be for this particular meal about a cup of it. So it's, again, a fairly significant, although you use um, no um, salt added um, stock or a low sodium stock or the uh, no salt added tomatoes, it's still going to have some, you know, significant amount of salt in it as well. So I thought it turned out really good. My family is, you can also cut that down if you just left out that kosher salt at the end or reduced it to some degree. That would help. Um, I left, uh, in, the, in our recipe, we actually left the salt out. Um, after I tried it, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. Um, and I didn't want to make it too salty. Um, so I just left it out and, and let it set the way it was. So, um, as far as demoing, I was going to show you guys a little bit about, about using um, uh, fresh ginger, which is, is probably one of my favorite uh, items to use in the home just because, man, it smells fantastic. Um, ground ginger that we use in our, in our Japanese, uh, you know, hibachi style cooking at our house and things like that um, is nothing compared to fresh, right? Um, anybody that's ever used it in their home, it's, it's like the most furthest apart from each other as humanly possible. Uh, but it's really, really easy to use uh, fresh ginger. You just want to use a peeler, right? Um, and you're just going to peel it like you would a cucumber or anything else. Um, it can be a little bit difficult um, because as we've discussed in previous classes, um, it usually has a shape of some type of animal. Right? Or it looks like a little person, you know, standing out. Um, so it's a little bit hard to work around, so you just got to try to be um, a little bit artistic. Right? Um, yes? Have you ever tried using a spoon to do it? Yes. I was watching a cooking show one time and they said to use a spoon. To use a spoon to scrape it off. Yes. And it worked great. Yes. She had said use a spoon to scrape the skin and everything off. Um, I'm not very talented with a spoon, except for when it comes to avocados, because um, every time I've tried to do it, it I just make a mess of it. So I stick to the, uh, the age-old trick of, of using a vegetable peeler. It works good with me. Um, has everybody got one of these at home? Right? Usually either like an A-frame one, those are fantastic. Um, they're really handy. If you use the small size grade on that, um, it works fantastic. It's very fibrous, so you're going to get a little irritated um, because it's going to clog up those holes pretty quickly. Okay, If you use the side instead of going straight up and down, that will help. Okay, And then what that will do is that will leave those strings a little bit longer, the fibers inside of the center of it, and you can just pick those out as you need to and then move on. Okay, And I'll show you a little bit of that as we go. 
Um, and you're just going to grate that out. Um, you can also chop it. Um, it really just depends on how you want that flavor profile um, to pan out, okay? Um, and as you can see, as we get going, my grate is starting to get a little bit clogged. And you can see fibers, the hairs, right? Going crazy. So um, go against the grain, bunch all that up. As long, and I always say, as long as it's small, it's going to be fine. Okay? It's not going to hurt anything. If you use it this way, it, it, it's a little bit more difficult to kind of work through because you're kind of cutting through those fibers, which are fine to eat. They're not going to hurt you. Um, you just want them cut. You don't want them to be, uh, you know, long pieces. Then you serve it to a friend, and they think they got it. Are we allowed to? Yeah. Okay. You can say here. I know that's kind of a. You don't want to talk about it. It's not good, but it happens, right? So. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> don't air that. All right. Let's delete that. That'll be fine. So yeah. Um, so like I said, it can be a bit of a pain to work with, as you can see. What you're left is there's kind of a hard part right here, but then there's just a lot of that fibrous material that can that can be kind of a, a pain to work through. Um, but honestly, if, if you just get in there and get after it, um, you can use a simple device that most people have in their home, um, and it works really really easy. Yes. I have found where I'll when I get it all clean, I slice up my ginger. Mm -hmm and put it in the freezer in slices. And yes. when I need some, it's half frozen and it grates great. Yes, oh. yes. Yeah, I actually, whatever I have left over at the end of today, I'll leave whole um, and then I put it in the freezer. And then you can, you can basically just let it thaw partially and peel the skin right off of it, grate it out and it grates up a lot easier that way than it does fresh, fresh actually. Freezing process, as we've talked before, when water freezes, it freezes in cubes instead of fluid like it normally is. And then whenever it thaws, it thaws back to fluid again. And so a lot of those, a lot of that fiber and that material inside of there kind of breaks up, right? As soon as it thaws, it kind of breaks up and it is a little bit easier to uh, manage. So what did you think about this one? Good, isn't it? I, and I'm not, I don't do hot very well, don't do spicy very well, and I really did like it. It might even never have a return visit to my house. So. Um, I think we're going to go ahead then and Misha, uh, and she's going to do a couple of recipes for you, so we have a surprise. Okay, so um, the first recipe I'm going to do is the Chinese Chicken Chow. Um, it's a dessert that we're going to be serving. Um, and so this is a traditional Indian type candy. Um, yes, it's not on there because we had a little mix up, so Miss Rhonda is going to pass the recipe up to you guys. Um, we came up with two recipes. I'm going to talk about both, but we only demo one. Um, so the date in Nut Ladu is um, a traditional dessert in India, but they call it candy um, because it's so sweet. Um, because of the, the dates in there. So have you guys all had a date? Have you ever baked with a date? Yeah. So they're a really good um, sugar substitute in recipes. Um, so that's kind of what it does with this recipe. Um, the date in nut ladu is very similar to a um, like an energy bite. Have you seen those kind of go around? They're kind of popular right now. Um, so it's basically going to be chopped dates, <laughs> chopped nuts, um, it's going to have a little cocoa powder and a little coffee, um, like instant coffee in it, um, and you just mix it all up and make it into little balls. Um, so with the dates in there, it's going to be really high in fiber, um, and it's going to be really sweet, so those dates kind of act like a, a sugar substitute in there. <clears throat> and the mixed nuts, um, so the recipe calls for almonds, pistachios, cashews, and pecans. You can honestly use any nut that you want, so if there's something in there that you don't like or you're kind of allergic to, um, just make it what you want. Um, but, so those are going to give you lots of heart healthy fats, those monounsaturated uh, mono fats that help to raise our healthy cholesterol. 
um, and lower our bad cholesterol. So those are going to be really great for our fat, but then also the fiber content. So you're getting a double whammy with fiber of the dates and then the nuts. Um, and then the cocoa powder and the instant coffee um, have antioxidants in them. So that's going to help with um, risks of diseases, but also with um, signs of aging. So those um, antioxidants can kind of be a, a hidden beauty secret there. Do you have anything to add here? Yeah, we got some dates. Perfect. You know, um, dates can be a little bit scary, okay? Um, has anybody ever cooked with dates, used dates, whole? Few people have used them whole, right? Um, <clears throat> because they, they are very, very sweet, um, they can be a little bit difficult to try to chop, right? Um, and as you're going through the process in your mind of reading the directions on this recipe on what to do and how to do it, you probably get, begin to think there is absolutely no way this is going to work, okay? It's way too sweet, it's way too sticky, it's gonna go into my food processor and it's just gonna make a mess, okay? Um, first things first, what I would recommend is, uh, does everybody keep like pan spray at their house or something of that sort? Um, maybe one of those spritzers you can fill up, you ever use those olive oil, air compressed and it just makes your own little homemade? Okay, anyway. Um, Spray the entire inside of your food processor first, okay? Spray the blade, spray every part of the blade, spray the, 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 the top of the blade where it connects on everything. Spray everything, spray everything, okay? Um, and that's going to keep it from just blasting to the side of your food processor, sticking, and then stopping the blade from moving, which I promise you will happen, all right? Um, as far as cutting these go, it doesn't need to be pretty, okay? All you're really doing is helping the food processor along, okay? Um, so, let's, let's move some things so you guys can kind of see this a little bit better. How's that? Better? Perfect. All right. So, there's a, there's a seed on the inside, right? Sometimes you're going to have a stem on this side, sometimes you're not. Um, you're just going to cut halfway through, open it up, by the seed. We got lucky on this one, there's no seed. Cut it the rest of the way through, and then you're just going to chop it into pieces, okay? Um, I believe your recipe calls for dried, and then you go through the process of rehydrating them and everything. Um, it's, it really is, for, for me personally, I felt like it's easier just to use the fresh um, because you've got to rehydrate them in the microwave and you've got to go through that whole rigmarole and it's just not necessary. Um, I understand what they were trying to do with those directions of just making it a little bit, these are already seated. I was going to say, man, wow. I, don't, I don't read much, so it says it right there. Dried pitted dates. Yeah, so you can buy them already pitted, or you can cut them open the way he was telling you. Yeah. The ones I had earlier were not pitted. So, um, so yeah, anyway. So you're just going to cut them into about quarter inch pieces. Again, they don't have to be pretty. Um, you're really just trying to help your food processor uh, deal with something that's going to be a little bit difficult on it. Um, Cut it up, get it in your in your uh, measuring cup. You're going to want to press them down a little bit just because there is some space in there um, and they're going to want to stick to the sides and stick together. Um, so when you get them in your measuring cup, be sure to just kind of pat them down in there so you get a good amount. You're good two cups, I believe this, or no, mine was two cups because I doubled the recipe. Mm -hmm. It's just one cup for you. Um, or even a half cup, you can do a small amount. Yeah, get those dates cut up, um, get them in your food processor. Um, I was not able to do the nuts. I believe it says to do the nuts, mince them up, add them in the fruit processor with the rest of the mixture, and let it do the work for you. I wasn't able to do that with our food processor. Um, but what I did is, is I, I chopped the nuts a little bit in the food processor, um, pulled them out, put them in the bowl with the, um, 
the, the, the chopped up dates and cocoa powder and coffee mixture, um, and then I just kneaded them together with, by hand. Um, it really wasn't that difficult. Just make sure that you spray your hands with some fan spray, um, your gloves. That'll probably be a lot easier. Um, spray them up, get them really nice and, and um, you just you just want them greasy, yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't want anything to stick together. It's going to make the whole process much easier. Get them mixed up, and then you can start the process of balling them out. Um, and they do they do really really well. Um, and after that, I put them in the food processor. The the best way to know that they're mixed well is it will turn into a giant ball, and and almost throw your food processor off the counter. <laughs> okay, I figured that's a really good alarm system to have in place to let you know that it's done. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this and walking away for a minute and coming back to it. You're going to have a mess on your hands. So, um, but it will. Once it's all mixed up and it's, and it's good and, and, and um, emulsified, just mixed together, um, it, will, it will ball up on you. And that's when you know it's time to pull it out and it's ready to go. All right? So the recipe calls for roasted nuts, but if for some reason you can't find them, it's super easy to just roast them yourself. Do you want to share anything about how to roast a nut? Um, yeah, just make sure that you have um, uh, the right temperature. You don't want your oven to be too hot. Um, you're going to have different sizes of nuts in there whenever you go to roast them. It doesn't matter what kind of nut you're using, um, and it's, it's going to be really easy to, to roast one way too far. And, and if, uh, it just takes one nut in a recipe like this to ruin the entire batch because once a nut is just a little bit burnt, you're gonna taste it everywhere, all right? Um, it's kinda like scalded milk in a soup. It doesn't matter how much there was that we got scalded, it's, you're gonna taste it, all right? Um, so just be really, really careful on the temperature of your oven um, and, and just get them nice and spread out because you want a nice, even roasting. Okay. Did you guys like them? Yes. Yeah. You think you would make them? Yes. I, I think something I had something similar to this from Turkey. It's possible. Yeah. Very similar. Mm -hmm. I think that they would make a really good dessert, but they could also make a good snack or breakfast item um, since they're going to be high in fiber and protein. Um, and they're kind of like those energy bites that go around. So. Good. I'm glad you liked them. When you get that date mixture out of the food processor, it's going to have the consistency of a, of a real, real tight, strong taffy, like a, like a Turkish taffy. Yeah, it's going to be really, really thick um, and sticky. Yep, yeah, so the other recipe that you guys have is called golden milk. Um, so we're not going to demo that, but have you ever heard of it? It's super trendy right now. I think, um, so it, it's also called turmeric milk um, because the main ingredient is turmeric. Um, so it's gonna be a really pretty golden yellow color. <clears throat> Excuse me, so um, up at the top, it does say that you can make it with coconut milk or almond milk. Um, at home, I made it with coconut milk um, because it's a little bit more traditional with the Indian culture, and it also will froth up much better than an almond milk. So it's gonna have a higher fat content in it, and so if you want it to be really frothy, kind of like a latte, um, the coconut milk is the way to go, especially if you have a frother, um, like the electric ones, it's gonna get a really nice froth on top. Um, and with turmeric, it's also anti-inflammatory and it has antioxidant um, properties in it, which Lynetta talked about with the other spices, it just kind of fits right into those. Um, but it has been found to decrease our stress hormone and increase our happy hormone. So decrease our cortisol and increase our serotonin. So it, it has some brain health benefits to it as well. Um, and it also is really high in manganese, which is anti-inflammatory and can help protect our bones. So it's got a, it's got a pretty good nutrient punch to it. Um, and it's very earthy. If you've ever cooked with turmeric, um, it's kind of, it can be kind of spicy, um, but the ground is less spicy and it's just going to be very earthy and warm. Um, and then we were a little freaked out by the whole pepper, uh, pepper horns in there. Um, but when I made it at home, I really couldn't taste them. Like I thought it was going to be spicy and I kind of thought that was weird, but it didn't add that spice to it. It just kind of made it earthy, um, 
and very warm in flavor rather than spice. Do you guys have any questions? I've been wanting yeah, to try the two of them. Yeah, black pepper yeah. in it because uh -huh. when you combine black pepper with turmeric, it increases the antioxidants. The antioxidants, yeah. So the black pepper is also going to help with that for sure. Yeah. Um, so with turmeric, the powder or fresh, um, it is going to it, it can stain. So it can stain your hands, it can stain your towels or your clothes. So um, I would make sure, especially if you're going to use it fresh, to try to put some rubber gloves on and to just like wear an apron or something that you're not going to care if you gets a little messy. Yeah? Where do you get fresh turmeric? I've never even seen it. Yep, so you can get fresh turmeric at, um, at markets, like the like grocery stores. I don't think I've ever seen it at Walmart, so it might be more of a specialty store. Um, I couldn't find it at my Walmart in Republic, so I just used the ground. I would recommend trying to find, if you can find it fresh, um, it'll give it a little bit more of a pungent flavor, um, especially with the ginger. So I used ground <coughs> ginger, and I wish that I would have used fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just going to give it a little bit more flavor that way. You might find it at Mama Jean's or Lucky's yeah. Market. That's what I was wondering. I'm thinking a little bit more seat. specialty. Mm -hmm. It looks very similar to ginger. So it's a root, um, the same, so it's going to be in a kind of funky shape, probably like ginger, but when you cut into it, it is um, like a very bright orangey yellow. And if it stains, it's probably pretty moist too. Yep, uh -huh. it's, it's like ginger, ginger's going to be moist as well. I have a big jar of turmeric, you know, that uh -huh. I, get, I get it at the army store, but I've never had the, never seen the fresh. So. Yep, so it's going to look very similar, yep, but it will stain, so just be careful. Any other questions? Okay. We will try to have. We'll try to have the nutrient information uh, for the date mixture, the nut date mixture on Pinterest. Well, we just didn't have time to do it after we found it. We had that sample to pull that up informate for you. So we'll try to include that on uh, when the recipes are on Pinterest. So. Uh, first time to try some of these kind of um, Indian dishes, or have you done that in the past? No, that's no. We're gonna try some of them at home. Yes. I might, I might be the one to have those eight slices of <laughs> flatbread. I don't know. Um, so we do have some door prizes, um, and just want to remind you again that you the registration for next month. Which does anybody know the topic? Maybe we should know the topic before we do it. Uh, May 13th, tis the season to chill and grill. 